so what we've learned so far is that Murder Grandpa is in One Piece. Mm-hmm. And that is not, just fantastic. Are we, doing, are we not doing the episode intro? No, there aren't really intros for After Dark. Okay, fair enough. Here's an intro. So About two minutes ago, I just told Matt to suck my ass. That yeah, <laughs> that's a very that's a very true thing that happened. Mm-hmm. There's the episode title. Mm-hmm. That mm, don't know about that. <laughs> After dark episode, whichever one we're on, suck my ass. You know what's great? So yeah, oh, yeah. go ahead, man. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, um, I I think both of you have heard, but that the bird is the word. God damn it! <laughs> no, I was so Thursday. Well, everybody night, knows that bed, the bird right? is the word. Sorry. Go. Go ahead. So I'm in bed on th- on Thursday night, and I go mm. to roll over, and I feel something just stab me right above the ankle. Mm. At first, I'm thinking it's uh like one of my cat's toenails that fell off. You know how they do that sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've stepped on them. It, it sucks. Um, and then my second thought was, is this a spider or a tick? Because I slapped it off my leg, and I felt it. It was like way bigger than a cat toenail. So I was like, oh shit, is this a spider or a tick? Um, I got up, turned on my bedroom light, and I looked. There's a fucking sweat bee crawling on my bed. Eww. Oh, right! I saw so, you talking about that. Ooh. That was... So you, deci- you decided to, what, act out B-movie? No, unfortunately. <laughs> You're gonna get sued. Um, but what I did do is that I, I killed the bee with a with a ruler that i have okay. specifically for hitting flies and killing flies it upgraded and yeah i was just like i can't believe that's the first time in my 26 years of life that i've been stung by a bee really? and it stung me in my own bed god there... it committed a war crime <laughs> there was a year there was one year like one summer where i was stung by a bee once a once a week for like oh that absolutely like no sucks. joke like two months, um yeah I can't just yeah it was bad it hurt like a bitch yeah getting stung sucks man it hurt so bad imagine if it was like yeah a snake. no it's not fun I don't want to imagine if it was a snake that's fair don't do that it's a bad I'm a snake so that's how my Thursday night went what about you. Um, last Thursday? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every day. Oh. My schedule's been absolutely fucked, and, uh, there's shit going on at work that I can't, uh, get into, but suffice it to say, it's hitting a fan. I've been working on my diet. Nice. Oh, that's about it, honestly, just working on my diet. Oh, I got a new chair, move some stuff around, probably gonna rearrange the, uh... The old uh, basement here soon to get a nice little setup going. I need to put some money aside and get myself an L-shaped desk. Yeah, man. Come on. Join that L-shaped life. It's great. That's what I have. Because I need to get my PC up off the floor. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, I, I got mine from Walmart. They're glass top desks with like, it's glass and metal. There's no wood. Because I don't trust oh, yeah. Walmart wood. I don't trust plywood. Or, you know, balsa wood or whatever it's that shit's made out of. Um, but I, I need to upgrade. I need a bigger desk, actually. Uh, I only pent, spade like, uh, spent like 120 on this, I think, at the most. And it's lasted Damn. for ages. That's not, not bad. bad. No, I'm probably going to give it to Kaz eventually when, uh, when I get my new one. My partner. Eventually, I want to stop using... This old LG TV has a second monitor and get an actual second monitor. Smart. I have uh an I have two TVs I got for free and then one of them broke and I had to take the TV from upstairs until I can get a new one. So ah uh, damn. Yeah, it sucks. It's same size luckily, but like uh it's just it's annoying. We'll see though. You know what's banging? Like what actually is pretty good? What's up? I've been eating more like rice cakes cuz I remember I used to like like not like basic basic bitch rice cakes, but like the really good flavored ones you can get from like Walmart uh, in like mm. little bags. So they just get too flaky for me. That's fair. Well, that's that's what I'm saying is like you should get the ones they're about the size of like a silver dollar, and they're like flavored. So like I I had like a, some white cheddar ones the other day. Um, 
but see those feel like I'm I'm not eating anything. Like I take a I bite it and it's like it crumbles and like did, did I actually bite well, something? Well, you just take all you taste is white cheddar dust. It's great. Um, yeah, when I was living with Jake, he used to get rice cakes all the time. Yeah, but we also did get uh, some big rice cakes, and I had like a, an epiphany, because all I had down here earlier was some rice cakes and some peanut butter, and that was it. And I was like, I wonder. That's pretty good, actually, turns out. Uh, I actually, I can see that. I can see that. It's basically yeah, that sounds like nice. peanut butter and crackers, but like, crack, not, not saltines, so it's a little bit healthier, I guess. But yeah, I'm trying to mm-hmm. get my diet in check instead of like so the thing that i've been talking about it like recently is not to not to specifically uh remove things from your diet but to balance it right so like um the my plate thing that i showed i showed you guys a couple of days ago where it's like you want like one protein one um dairy at least of each of these you know one protein one dairy one grain one vegetable, one fruit, uh, yeah, and one fruit. And, like, you want to do that on every plate that you can. So, like, in the morning, like, normally I'd get, like, eggs and bacon and, like, a, you know, toast maybe or something like that, or hash browns. Now I try, now I get an omelet, because the omelet has, like, cheese and, and, and green peppers and onions, and I also get, like, a, like, a drink, like a, it's like a apple and pineapple and, um, spinach blend. Um, that's not... See, you had me till the well, spinach. Well, <laughs> the thing about it is, it's like you don't taste the spinach. That's the thing I've learned about spinach. Because I used to hate spinach. Because the only way I'd ever eat spinach is when it was boiled. Like, that's the only time spinach would ever be presented to me. But put it on, like, put it, like, fresh on, like, a burger. Or put it in, like, a sandwich. Or, like, as a salad. Or, um, or, like, you know, mix it up. Like, like, um... What do you call it? Where like a, you know, into like a, into like a smoothie or into like a drink, you can't taste it, and it's fine, and it's better for you. Yeah, I legitimately don't think I've had spinach in twenty years. You should try it instead of instead of lettuce for salads because it is legitimately better for you and doesn't taste any different. At least not to well, me. Well, yeah. See, see though, I don't I don't do salads. See, Fair. See, I disagree with it. Doesn't taste any different because it. Tastes a lot more irony to me. Okay, I get it. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, and that's the whole reason I can't eat it is it, it's it's but also, too much of an irony. I mean, I'll say this much: you guys don't have as many problems with your diet as I do. Like, just legitimately, I wouldn't go there. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah. Okay. Well, mine's pretty shitty. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it's it's a it's a whole thing. Um, but that's kind of the big thing right now is just to try to do that. As best I can. My issue is portion control, and I can never get it under wraps. Well, with my new meds that I've had, like, one of the main things I was talking about the other day with someone is, like, my level of hunger, like, not to not to be like, oh, I'm, I'm like, worse than everyone else, but my level of hunger is, like, worse than any ones I've ever met, in that when I get hungry, I don't get hungry, I start to hurt, and it's just pure pain and nausea and pain and that's all i get and that is like first thing in the morning i get like that immediately see that sounds like you almost got uh and don't take this the wrong way but some kind of neurological fuck no actually it turns out it was it was um uh acid reflux it was really incredibly horribly terribly acid reflux and for the longest huh. time, I thought it was just because I was hungry. And, like, my biggest thing was, like, well, if how how am I not able to handle this when everyone else can? Because I thought that's just how everyone was. But I started taking, like, a Pepsid, like a, like a Pepsid uh, antacid at night before I go to bed. And when I wake up in the morning, difference? yeah, like, that plus I have, like, an appetite suppressant now uh, because of the, like, I'm, there's still, like, a major hunger there. And uh, a couple other things that I'm taking for, like, my thyroid and things like that. And, like, don't have to worry about, like, being hungry all the time, not worry about where my next meal's coming from. I can eat a proper plate of food and not be either hungry before, you know, or, or incredibly full afterwards. It's, like, a nice balance. Like, mm-hmm. that has definitely helped me out a lot. And that that's happened, like, really, like, in the last three weeks. So. You know, see, the way you were making it sound to me sounded like some kind of trauma in the past where... 
you had to hoard food and your brain just goes into panic mode if you don't have Yeah, well, I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to get too deep on it because this, that's not this kind of podcast, but, like, I was in survival mode for most of my life uh, from, like, the age of, like, 19 until a couple of years ago. <laughs> I basically just was in survival mode and I, you know, ate what I could, didn't really care about diet, couldn't really, didn't really have the ability to care about diet. And now that I can, now that I can actually, you know, worry about my food and actually go to the doctor and do these things, it's a completely different world. Because, because right. like, I had a friend of mine who was talking about they were doing keto, and they would be like, you know, I don't eat anything all day, and then I'll have, like, some food at the end of the day, or I'll have something in the morning. And I was like, well, that, how do you do that? Like, doesn't that hurt? He's like, oh, yeah, it hurts terribly, but I just pushed through it. And, like, my brain was always like, well, if he's having the level of pain that I do... How can he push through it? That doesn't make any sense. And, like, it would get me really down. Like, I would be really depressed by that. But, like, now I know that wasn't having hunger pain. It was literally just acid reflux all day. I think Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Acid reflux can really fucking suck. Yeah. Yeah. I think my issue is, um, and I'm not going to go too far into my own weight issues, um... But I think my issue is that outside of work, I just don't exercise much at all. That's fair. Same. It's one of my major problems, like, too. Like, I don't even eat all that much, and I'm pretty good at portion control, but I just don't, I don't exercise. That's, I mean, that's fair. You're just not active. I figured your job would be, be enough exercise for you, though. Like, I would assume your you job would is, think. like, really active. <laughs> one would think. Though you gotta remember, like, even look at, like, Coming back to being more topical, the God of War trailer that just came out, the pictures of Thor that are in that. Yeah. Like, look at him. That's a that's a strong boy. That's a big that's a big strong man. Like that's a strong man physique, not a fucking bodybuilder. Exactly. Physique. So like you know, being thin or whatever is it doesn't necessarily mean you're strong. It just means that you don't eat enough and you're dehydrated. So yeah, no, the Thor reveal actually was that actually like boosted my confidence as silly as that might sound i was like oh absolutely like he kind of looks like me you look at people like the mountain the guy that played the mountain like he's a he's a pot belly like he's that's that's what strong is you know those those barrel chested dudes not like right right not like gary strider like like watch a strongman competition like where they pull the trucks carry the boulders that kind of shit those guys don't have like six packs they have a I'm not going to say it's a gut, because it's not really a gut, but there is a massive amount of uh, muscle, muscle underneath, underneath it. it. Yeah. What's the, the guy's name? Uh, so I, I follow a couple of different uh, Twitch people and YouTubers, and Nick, uh, I think Nick actually showed me this. Um, nope. Where, oh, he's, he's here, he says no. <laughs> um, where uh, there's a Russian guy who does a slapping competition his name is emil kamatsky i think oh yeah and um, he's like he's like one of the strongest slap gods in the world and like he has like his body looks you know like someone yeah, who maybe I've like watched, drinks a lot of beers and hangs around but he's strong as fuck i've watched critical's videos yeah. covering the slap fight Moist critical that's who that's who i was talking about yeah um i don't have them down here these are love the, moist critical yeah he's great i adore moist critical and he does some really good stuff um that's slapping he stuff is, is great. critical is a handsome motherfucker he, he is unnecessarily handsome and also does everything yeah like his youtube channel is just a variety of just like oh well i'm guessing i'm doing this today think i've ever seen someone do more as well as he does on on like twitch like Anything from like speed running a uh, keto a uh, what is it not keto is it uh he was like speed running the the SpongeBob ketamine game oh yeah and then like yep the what yeah SpongeBob <laughs> yeah. overdoses on ketamine it's great or Mr Krabs overdoses on ketamine right uh he fa- he was the one that found like the speed run tech for that game and then like he turns around and like he's beating people at chess like what the fuck like what are you doing man. Then he's also got his podcast, which is, I love it. It's just called The Official Podcast. <laughs> That's stupid. And then he's in a fucking metal band called The Gentlemen. Oh my god, yeah, no, I didn't know any of this. Like, I don't follow him that closely, 
mostly it's when his the slap god stuff shows up on YouTube. I'll I'll yeah. turn it on. But yeah, I watched a video that he put out like I want to say it was at least eight or nine months ago now. But um, he was on these gas powered like gaming chairs. Oh God. Because oh, he Lord. he rented out like a, like an office space. It's basically just like a giant warehouse. And yeah. they they set up these soda these soda cans on posts around the parking lot. Oh my god! It, the 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 point of the video was the drive around like a set like course in these gas powered gaming chairs, and then this try is to just uh, asking for issues, yeah. and then try to throw dildos. Okay. At the pop cans to knock them over. Yeah, he also has like Jesus one of the like Christ. largest collections of dildos in the world or some shit. Yeah, he has like, like far too many dildos. It's wild. It's absolutely wild. He has huge dildos. Yeah, yeah, I've seen the like giant pillar ones. That are like has. three feet tall yeah. and like twenty inches around or some shit. God. There's actually a shop around here that you can rent one of those. That's amazing. Like, like I don't understand. You know what? I don't want to understand. Do not write in telling us what those are for and how they're used. <laughs> I don't want to know. And I'm not a prude, you know? I'm okay with stuff like that. But also, I don't really want to know. Oh, yeah. There was a bit. Uh, there was a, a saga where he was doing a GTA 5 RP. Why? Oh. I don't know. I mean, he was doing Rust RP when they had uh, That's just to do when a it. bunch of streamers made that Rust server. He played. I know he played some fourteen. Like everyone seems to be like they're playing some fourteen at this point. Yeah. God. I need to. I need to get back into fourteen. I haven't played it in like I want to say maybe two months. You got time, man. Well, I don't know if you got time now. You got until November eighteenth, I think, to get through the game. Oh, is that when Endwalker? That's when Endwalker out? hits. Yeah, and uh, um, so I'm not gonna be able to complete anything before Endwalker comes out. I'm just gonna tell out. you, when Endwalker hits, it's gonna be a lot of after darts. <laughs> gonna be a when lot. When Endwalker of, hits, a lot of after darts. I might as well just not be alive. <laughs> ain't gonna be around. I'm be ain't fully no. immersed. My only problem is, is that Endwalker's hitting on a day that I have to work, so I can't look at anything online that day. No Twitter. Discord, Twitch, nope, none of it. Oh, yeah, shit, that's a Thursday. Yep. They're dropping that on a Thursday? Oh, is it a Thursday? Yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, hang on, let me double check, because I was told it was not a Thursday. They normally drop stuff on uh that You know Tuesdays what, that might be Fridays. the initial day, but there is, a, like, an early access day, which I think is, like, the 9th, which is not a Thursday. Mm. What day is yeah, that? Yeah, I'm I'm on how long to beat, and I typed in Final Fantasy fourteen, and just Heaven's Word alone is 115 hours, yeah, or more. Yeah, got to do it, man. Become a fourteen streamer. It, you know, it's not a bad idea. Oh, okay, it's no, it's November nineteenth. I was one day 19th. off. Nineteenth, yeah, that's a Friday, and that's gonna. So the official release is the twenty third. Anyone who pre-orders it gets access to it on the 19th, and it's going to be... My only hope, my only hope at this point is that it's a buggy, horrific mess that no one can play. Because <laughs> that's the only... That's the only way I'm going to be able to, like... <coughs> hold off. You think so? Yeah. At least until I get off work that day. Because that Thursday, or that Friday, I get off at, like, 8... And then I'll have a good, like, six hours to play it, because I have to work. I work late on Saturday. I work 11 to, uh, mm. I work, uh, 2 to 11. So, yeah. I doubt you're going to get that lucky. Uh, what do you mean? I said I doubt you're going to get that lucky where it's a buggy mess. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the thing is, like, Shadowbringers, I think, was relatively bug-free. Nick would know. He says, not paying attention to anything I'm saying. Nick is sitting right next to me, though, by the way. Yeah, oh. my headphones, I put them on. Um, he's just, he doesn't have any headphones or anything. It's all good. I would... Go back upstairs. Well, I would... Oh, there's not really anywhere to plug them in. I would turn take the thing off, but, like, I can't, because it would just get the, the audio recording would just get this. Same bug? No, but it's, it's still on. Okay. 
nose, yeah. it'll be like, okay, problem. Yeah, that, yeah, congestion is the main problem that they're going to have, so. Oh, you, yeah, but that's that pretty much happens in any new MMO uh, expansion yeah. or anything, is everybody jumps on and gets congested, and then everybody gets pissed off, and you start, like, the umpteen million threads of, why didn't they upgrade the servers? Blah, 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 Well, they, at least they have a pretty decent excuse for upgrading the servers this time, because they literally could not, physically. They don't have the equipment because of COVID. Uh, or, they, or they would have already done it. Y'all want to know what game I finished recently? Uh, Finally. Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> I wish. No, I finally finished uh, doing my Super Mario Galaxy Let's Play. Oh, nice, dude. Nice. Congrats. That goes up actually... Um, well, by the time this episode of After Dark comes out, the finale of Super Mario Galaxy would have been uploaded yesterday. When are you starting Galaxy 2? Uh, whenever I can get a copy of it. <laughs> I've never played it. They say it's great. Um... That's what they say about Galaxy, and man, let me tell you, Galaxy's I've never good. been more divisive about a game. Really? <laughs> mm. That did you one hundred percent it? No. There are good things about Super Mario Galaxy, and there are not great things about Super Mario Galaxy. One of them being the camera. Yeah. The camera. The camera is god awful. Uh, there's no excuse. Uh, the. The swimming mechanics are also god awful. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the boss the boss fights weren't like consistent. And, like it didn't go up from like, oh, here are all the easy bosses. Here's all the hard bosses. It kind of like jumped between easy and hard. Right. Every time. Also, Spring Suit Mario is the worst Mario power up in any I Super Mario game. Don't think they bring him back for two, if I'm not mistaken. Think. Christ. I can find out. Because that shit sucked. So I've just been working on finally platining, platinuming all the Mass Effects on Legendary. Nice. I just have oh. three left to do. Hey, bad news. It is in two. <laughs> oh. And they didn't change how it worked. It sucks. It sucks. It's bad. It's a bad That's power. very up. bad. Yep. Um, I need to play Mass Effect. I keep sitting here like... I do, too. I've never played Mass Effect. I keep sitting here like... Grab Legendary it. Edition. It's the best way to do it. Yeah, but... Uh, I I don't like that kind of fantasy. I think I've come to the conclusion that I just don't like... Not in the sci science fantasy? Si yeah, well, it depends on the science fantasy. Well, I like it when it's I, more well, fantasy than science. Good news. Good news. It's technically not science fantasy. Okay. Science fantasy would be more like Star Wars, where there's no explanation. Right. Oh, right. So yeah. maybe this is straight up. Maybe this is straight up science fiction, where there is, albeit it's bullshit because it's not you know based off real it's science. It's like mass technology or whatever, like. But there is an internal in-universe explanation maybe that's for it. Why I don't like. Because like I, I my kind of sci science fiction like science fan stuff is like Destiny, where it's just like. It's fantasy, but, like, sci-fi. You know, like... That's science yeah, fantasy. Yeah, yeah, like, that's the kind of stuff I like. I like the weird, the weird out there shit. Um, I don't know. I And also, like, you would you would think that would be, like, okay, well, then play, like, sh like Dragon Age, right? Like, and I, I like Inquisition, but there's something about that those well, games. I just don't like playing them. Dragon Age is straight-up fantasy, not science right, fantasy. Right, but I'm talking about, like, well, then... I like the way, fantasy the, the more the way than you, like, control it. Yeah. I guess it's just I don't like the way it plays. That's um, fair. I Well, you were jumping all over there, because first you were starting with the genre it is, and then you, like, with no segue went to mechanics. Right, no, what I was saying was, what I was saying was, well, you would think if I don't really like the, the sci-fi aspect of it, I would like pure fantasy more. So I should like, Sha I should like Dragon Age Inquisition, which I do. But I don't also really want to play it that much, which makes oh, me think okay. I just don't like how it's played. It plays. I think. Yeah, I, I think you're. Yeah, I think what you're talking about is maybe the way the story is told and the way it plays. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, mixed. because you're jumping between that's an, a third person uh, shooter and an MMO wannabe. Mm, like they're not even the same genre of. What like, is mechanic? What is type. Dragon Age actually? It's technically. an action adventure game. 
the original would be more our yeah. straight up strategy. Man, RPG. I hate that game. I can't play that game. I like two more or than tactic- one. And I or tactical RPG. I know there are people out there that uh, would stab. But the others are action. For saying that, look, one is great for what it started with the franchise and everything. I am in the minority, and I love two. Yeah, but most people hate. I it. I think two plays fantastically. I think it's got. The story's kind of meh, but it really plays really well. And I think that Inquisition is the best combination of the two, where the story's better, but the game plays a lot better at the same time. See, I think the story's great in 2. It's the main thing is the reuse of levels. Right. Yeah, that's fair. There's, there's not a lot of variety in the levels. But, like, for the story there's they're telling, there doesn't need to be. Yeah. I'll give you that. Um, I watched Pat play a little bit of, uh, play a little bit of, of Mass Effect 1, and, like, the more I look at it, the more it's like, maybe I should sit down and just play those games. Yeah, there, there's a lot of games from that era, and I want to say from, like, between the launch of the PS3 in 2012 that I just completely missed out on, because right. I didn't get a PS3 until the PS4 was already announced and almost out. Now... I am going to caveat this. If you're going to jump into Mass Effect, there is a big difference between how the first game plays and how 2 and 3 play. Mm. The first one is still a lot more of the RPG, whereas 2 and 3 went into the more action-adventure aspect. And, like... The biggest thing I can tell you is in in the first game, each individual ability has its own separate cooldown. In 2 and 3, they all share a global cooldown. It's a lot shorter than the ones in right. 1, but like it's a massive gameplay difference when you actually go through them. Mm. They have streamlined a lot of the gunplay across all three games with the Legendary Edition, but, like, your powers are going to be your main thing where you're going to notice a big difference. I think I think I have it on my Steam wish list. And I'd almost tell you to, like, even, even skip one if you just want to play them and you don't care so much about all the story details. Because the second one does have a intro comic thing when you boot it up where you get to make the major decisions from the yeah, first game. Yeah, but Jace, I, I think there, there's one thing that you I, I don't think you quite understand. And that's that I'm what you might call insane. And Oh no, I get I, that. I'm the same way. <laughs> I had to play I've been... all of Assassin's Creed 1 to even begin to enjoy Assassin's Creed 2. Even though Assassin's oh, Creed the 1 same is way. a bad game. It's not good. I'm the same way. I own every Yakuza. I have stopped playing 7 and uh, 1 because I had them both yeah. going because I got 0. Right. And I have to play them all the way through <laughs> from the beginning up to the yeah. end. Even though I know 7 is a whole new set of characters, yeah. I still have to play the See, rest. See, that, that I'm okay with because it's a reboot and it's like, as long as I know that you don't need a lot of context and see my brain gets yeah. that but it that's, won't and that's fair and nothing me. wrong with it I, I understand that like I, trust me i get it more than most but like yeah it's like me and nick have this constant conversation of like oh well season two gets good of, of you know of a show I'm like cool but season one sucks and i don't want to finish it <laughs> it's like but just skip it like no i i i feel i feel that real hard i need it no a great example of that is Star Trek Next Generation. First two seasons Man, I suck. Really, I really Three like season one of Star Trek Next Generation. Oh, I like it too, but ba- but compared to the yeah. rest of it... One of these days I'm going to sit down and watch Next Generation. I'm going to sit down and watch all of Star Trek, but I've just not done it yet. You know what show has a I've great actually, first season? What's that? I've actually been uh, going through it. I'm on season seven. Nice. The last season of Next Generation. Nice. I've never watched Star Trek. You should. They're pretty. They're pretty good if you want the more. I don't like the philosophical side. Yeah, I don't like the more crunchy fiction. sci-fi. 
Um, anyway, y- y'all know what show has a great season one? Uh, Centaur World. I have not seen that, but I've heard very many good things. Real good. But the... JoJo. I haven't seen JoJo. <laughs> the animated Harley Quinn show on HBO Max. Yeah, it's real good. It's yeah, so good. It's it gets better, dude. I cannot wait for season three. I fucking love Frank the Plant. God. I have... I have HBO Max. I need to actually sit down and watch it. it. Just don't go in expecting it to be like like a continuity heavy like Batman. Oh, TV I know show. it's not. There is continuity. I know it's not. But there's also like there's a Harley Quinn highway. Just I tr- trust yeah, it's me. Silly. It's wild. It's really silly, and I fucking love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, no, I've heard it's not like yeah they'll make uh, references to like in canon stuff, yeah. but it's basically its own. It thing. is. It's very much its own thing. Also, I I really enjoy the use of like C and D list villains from the DC universe, like fucking Doctor Psycho. Yeah. And like Kite Man. Kite Man's great. Kite Man's pretty good in like the current. Kite Man is really good ba- in the current Batman run. He's got some stuff he's doing, so I'll take it. Look, all I'm saying is that's one thing I'm actually enjoying with, like, Suicide yeah. Squad. Is oh, that they're yeah. pulling in a bunch of the, like, wait, you're grabbing that yeah. guy? Fucking Polka Dot, man. Yeah, right? That's great. Uh, Fuck, arm, fucking it, Polka arm Dot. Arm Fall Off Boy or whatever. <laughs> arm Fall Off Boy. I think they just the called weasel. him the Detachable Man right. in the, the Suicide Squad. TDK, but... the Detachable Kid. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's still arm fall off, and me, boy. Me and Nick, every now and again, we'll have a conversation about which ones are uh, not de- actually DC characters and which one were made up by James Gunn. And hey, turns uh, out, they're uh, all DC characters. I had to look them all up. Look, all I'm saying no. is Suicide Squad had Starro. Yeah. Yep. You know what that means, right? Uh, nope. That means we get Jaro. God. Char I'm sorry? Jaro. Jaro Batman's son. Is a piece of Starro that was kept in a jar and thinks Batman is yeah. his dad. Batman's oh son. my god. And at one point is no, Robin. No, that's a dream. No, that's what? a dream. He has a dream that he is Robin. He doesn't actually get to be Robin. Yeah. I, I looked that sh- shit up. Shut up. <laughs> I Google image Shut up. searched. I, re- I refuse. I refuse to accept that. I Google. He is Robin. I Google image searched Jaro, and one of the first things that popped up was the dream sequence where he's wearing the Robin shirt. <laughs> and it's, yeah. there's, he's amazing. There's a text bubble that just uh, says "On it, Dad." Yep. Uh huh. It's amazing. Jaro's great. I love Jaro. It's so good. Jaro's great. If they bring in Starro, they gotta do Jaro. Hey, you could at this point, like, just say that one of the little, gotta, one of the little stars. I gotta open survive. my. I gotta open I my just door real Bat quick Fleck so I can let the AC re- in. Reacting okay. to Jaro. That's all I yeah. ask. Yeah, there's, there's some really dumb, obscure comic characters on all sides. Yeah, 100%. Um, Headphones are back on. Did y'all see the, uh, speaking of in madness, did y'all see the stuff that came out about Squirrel Girls? Like, was supposed to be like a character in like a... And like a what is it? Uh, next, uh, fucking what's the name of the team? She, they were gonna, there was gonna be a TV show that had a team together that was gonna have Squirrel Girl in it, and they showed a bunch of pictures off of the girl with Squirrel Girl and all this. It was no, really I cool. had not heard that. And it really sucks. Yeah, not no idea. Really, really sucks that we don't get that. Real bad. There's a group. There's a group called Great Lakes Avengers. Yeah. Yeah, they they interact with Deadpool a lot. Wow, that's pretty cool. East Coast Avengers. Uh, that's that. I think that's what it was. Has, has anybody heard of uh, Snowflame? Snowflame's great. He has the power of cocaine. I'm so- yeah, literally, he does cocaine and he can control fire. <laughs> oh Snowflame. my god! But he has to. He has to I do the cocaine of, first. Uh, the only reason I know about Snowflame is because of uh, Top of the Fourth Wall. That's ridiculous. <laughs> There's also the Floronic Man in yes. DC, <laughs> who at one point is trying to take over the entire weed yeah, market he, in Gotham. The floor- <laughs> and, 
And employees they of Poison Ivy's They put the man in that DC, like, Tim vs. Harley Quinn movie, where Harley Quinn is horny for the entire thing. Like, that movie is unnecessarily horny. Like, Which uh, movie? Well, I forget what it's called. No. Is it the Assault on Arkham one? It's, ba- it's called uh, that movie Batman was... Harley Quinn. Me and Nick watched it together. Assault on Arkham was very horny. Uh, I, haven't, I don't think I've seen that one. I should probably watch it. Um, it's pretty yeah, good. The, yeah, ba- Batman it's called Harley Batman Quinn, Harley Quinn. You said? Uh, it ends with... Well, you know what? I'm not going to spoil it. Um, <laughs> from, I will say that uh, Harley Quinn and uh, uh, Dick Grayson do have sex in it. Um, oh. And Batman walks in on it. And it's very funny. It's very funny. <sighs> see, I can actually see that happening uh, you know, in canon. At like at least Grayson I'm and still very uh, much Harley. A, uh, I'm still very much here for um um oh, my brain is gone today, y'all. Uh, I'm still very much here for Harley and Ivy. Like that's that's where it's at. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you want to know one I really didn't like when they made the animated movie of it? What's up? Was for the Killing Joke where they had. Uh, Barbara and Bruce, like yeah, no, the entire there was no reason for that. If you took off like that... Act One and Act Three off the Killing Joke, or like the prologue and the epilogue, I guess actually would be more apt to call them. Then it would be fine, but adding that prologue and epilogue is just not necessary. Yeah. Also, like the the whole like, oh, she has a male best friend, but he's. It's extremely flamboyantly gay. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why you didn't just take what was in the fucking comic and just smooth it out or over an entire animation. Comic, also, I just want to say, here. just want to make it clear the point about her having the super flamboyant gay best friend is because that's bad representation. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But I, there was no reason to make that the relationship between Bruce God, and Bob sexual it. on that. It's oh, never been that so way. Much. It's always, it's always been mentor mentee. Yeah. Uh, because I'm not gonna say father daughter because you know, Jim Gordon is a great dad to Barbara. Eh. Ooh, my cats are getting into it. But. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna One say. One thing with that, that though. He's a great dad. I mean, I guess it depends on the depiction, right? Like, you're not gonna say he's a great dad in the in the Harley Quinn show, um. But I'm going by the most mainline continuity. He's a really pretty decent dad in uh Batman uh Earth One, which I'm gonna ask anyone listening to this to pick up and read because it's really, really, really fucking good. I need to read more. It's Batman basically comics. Batman. It's basically a sort of like what if, um, like Batman movie, but it's good. Uh, it's a, it's a bit more mm-hmm. realistic in a lot of ways. They don't do the Joker. Um, it's great. The first two, the first two are pretty great. The third one's not bad either. Um, I know people. There are some people that don't like it, but I I think it's all right. Um. The first two volumes are, yeah, because there's three volumes total. They did like a whole Earth One, like Wonder Woman, well, Earth One, Wonder Woman, and Earth One Superman. It's basically kind of like Ultimate DC. I guess is the best way to look at it. Yeah, like the Ultimates Marvel yeah, universe, kinda. but just DC. <laughs> you know what makes me super upset? I have read all of. Ultimate Spider-Man, and retained none of the information. Well, that's because we don't talk about the Ultimates universe. I like the Ultimate Spider-Man. Ultimate Spider-Man is about the only good spot, in my opinion, because they just, for some reason, in Ultimates, they decided making Quicksilver and Wanda canon. What do you mean by that? And uh, they, exactly what I'm implying. They and their brother and sister. Oh. What's it called? 
Um, they're... Like, that's official in the Ultimate See, Universe. That... Now, now I wish I didn't say anything about Sp- Ultimate Spider-Man. <laughs> Let's just I say don't that. They... that. Let's just say that they this is are not subjected the to the Westermark effect. The what? The the Westermark effect for um, all the people out there in the world is a psychological hypothesis that people who live in close domestic proximity during the first years of their lives become desensitized to sexual attraction to each other. You know, you ever wake up and sometimes you you don't want to learn. Yeah, well, you've learned yeah. new things today. I don't. I. Yeah. Again, oh, also, yeah. Uh, the entirety of um, the entirety of the first uh, volume of the Ultimates is a uh, parody of nine eleven. Turns out. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Ultimates universe has some has some really dumb and fucked up shit. The Ultimates in the fir- in that first volume do not have a villain. They don't fight anyone. They create their own villain. It's kind of fucked up and bad. God. Don't. Damn it. Don't read the Ultimates. Don't read the Ultimates. It's bad. Read Ultimate Spider-Man. Read read all the Miles Morales stuff. It's good. Yeah, no, Miles is good. I do need to read the Miles Morales book. Mm-hmm. I need to read Miles more comics is... in general, honestly. You should. Pretty much you're, you can't you go should. wrong with any Spider-Man other than... Uh, one more day. Don't read one more day. Oh god, fuck off with one more day. Ah, uh, read. Just, just completely ignore one more day. Read um Superior Spider Man. It's really good. Yeah, Superior um, Spider Man's good. Big Time is supposed to be pretty good. I haven't read it. Um, Any of the classics are good. Um, is Superior the one where it's actually uh Doc? Ock? Yeah, Doc Ock and Spider Man's body. That is a very, very good look into Doc Ock. Yeah. It's great. There's one there's one point in there where since he's in Peter's body, he punches somebody and knocks their jaw like flying. Mm-hmm. And he has this internal revelation like holy hell, Peter was holding back every time we fought. Mm-hmm. He could have killed me at any given moment. He's got some really, he, really good shit in there. Yeah, um, and it makes it, him realize like the amount of slut sacrifice and control that Peter has to have to do what he does. Hmm. I'm trying to remember who wrote Spirit of Spider-Man. Uh, and then the- one of my, f- I forget which continuity it's in, but one of my favorite moments is when he breaks into the prison to like make oh, Kingpin yeah. his bitch. Yeah, it's Dan Slot. Uh, Dan Slott wrote Superior Spider-Man, and he's really good, and I think that's what had got him Batman, and don't read any of his Batman, because his Batman's not great. Yeah, some guys are better at certain, uh, stories and oh, certain 100%. characters. 100%. Don't read Brian Michael Bendis' Superman. It's bad. <laughs> got oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> got it. I will keep that in mind for whenever I do a deep dive on comics. Not part of it. I mean, <coughs> you can't really go wrong with Grant Morrison, but like, oh man, Grant Morrison. But yeah, but great. realize it, it's gonna get weird. I, Grant Morrison believes that every version of of Batman is in continuity with each other. Yeah, it it's gonna get weird. It's wonderful. Um, uh, Grant Morrison is is Grant the one that think that. Like is always depicted as the esoteric like wizard. No, that's uh, thinking... that's Alan Moore. Yeah. Oh, Moore. he was in um. Yeah, he... Uh, Grant Morrison was in a couple of My Chemical Romance music videos. Wouldn't doubt it. That but, as great. part of the um, uh, Danger Days album. No, you want some actually like really good like not as well known like read any a Swamp Thing. Yeah, Swamp Thing's pretty good. I hear Swamp or, Thing is really good. Or any of Constant, uh, Constantine, which is going to be Hellblade. That's all of Alan Moore's stuff, though. Alan Moore's a crazy old man, so just take that into consideration. <laughs> yeah, his stuff's good, but the trope, the fans are geniuses, kind of applies to some of his shit. Like, he makes some out there, you gotta have some real vast knowledge to get the references stuff. Mm-hmm. 
it's not often, and a lot of it is to be pretentious, but like, he's a crazy it, old man yeah. who worships a snake yeah. god. Just That's not a joke. Just so we know, I guess last year Grant Morrison came out as non-binary and uses they then. Oh, right. Oh, I cool. remember that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. Thank I had not heard that. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah, they're great. Um, Graham Morrison does really, really good work. Usually, if you read something of his, of theirs, but there, there you go. Um, it's gonna be great. Um, their work on ooh, Batman they did Doom Patrol. Fantastic. Yes. Um. Uh, the best books of Doom Patrol are Grant Morrison's run, and the guy, the lead singer of uh of um. My Chemical Romance. Gerard Way? Gerard Way. Gerard Way's run on it is also very good. Yeah, I've been I've meeting. Gerard is, Gerard is surprisingly like great at comics. Um, those are the two, also, I believe those are the two runs that uh, that are what lead the um, Doom Patrol TV series, which is also fucking great. Oh shit, I didn't know Gerard uses he, him, and they, them. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that either. Um, well, shit. Huh. Great. Good for good for them. Isn't there a street in Doom Patrol that's like alive yep. and Danny the street. recently and recently came out? Uh, I believe Danny the Street it, the, has used they them the entire time. Yep, Danny the Street. Danny the Street is awesome. Yeah, it's a sentient stretch of street. That's amazing. Uh, if you, if you haven't watched the Doom Patrol show, uh... I was just gonna the, bring that up. I heard it's very good. Um, one of the people has the power to flex a muscle and make everything in, like, a 30-mile radius orgasm, including the street. What? Yeah, yeah. that show's great! You should watch it! <laughs> Brendan Fraser is a robot. Yeah, Brendan Fraser. It's it's Brendan Fraser's return to fucking cinema. It's amazing. I, I put it on my list. Once yeah. I'm done, yeah, it's on my list again. <laughs> I have this shit that I need you to sit down. One, and once, watch. once I'm done with the Harley Quinn cartoon, I'll start Doom Patrol. You know my favorite movie of all time is right. What? Well, okay, my act- Mario Brothers my, movie. My favorite movie of all time is uh, Tales from the Crypt Presents Demon Knight. That has nothing to do with this conversation. My <laughs> second favorite movie of all time is The Mummy with Brendan Fraser. Yes, by Rick O'Connell. Yeah, I fucking adore that movie from the bottom of my goddamn heart. It's so good. O'Connell, it looks like I've got all the horses. <laughs> hey, Benny, hey Benny, looks like I'm, looks on, like the... I'm on the wrong side of the river. <laughs> that entire exchange. <laughs> and also when I love also it. when Evie is trying uh, to like negotiate with the guy to get yeah. uh, to get him off Rick, the noose. What are your wh- right. what are what are your last words? Cut the rope and let me go. <laughs> he just looks at me like, can we do that? <laughs> he's not yeah, so any last request? Oh no, his neck did not break. Now we have to watch him choke to death. That movie's so, so good. good. The movie's great. This movie the second great. one's a, okay, the third one's not very good. That second one is just, oh, it's so good. God, that, I feel like the first mummy has been like so many people's bisexual awakening. Uh, yes, I, I, yeah, I, I can definitely see that. No, I, mean, I was more, that, for that me, it was more cast. about, for me, it was more about, like, I just, I wanted to play a character that was him. Like, I've been dying to play Rick O'Connell in, like, an adventure game at some point. Oh, that would be sick. Like, like, I'll fully admit to a man crush on the, uh, the Magi. Yeah. Um, I can't remember his name now. Odette Fair. <laughs> Who, yeah, uh, no. Wizard... He's a pretty, pretty man. Back before, back when they, back when, uh, the Iron Man movie was being talked about originally, they wanted, uh, Wizard predicted him as being Iron Man. Um, now correct me if I'm wrong, isn't that the same guy from Deuce Bigelow? Uh, I don't... Maybe? God, you're gonna make me look that up, aren't you? <laughs> look it up! <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the same guy. Well, yeah. He plays Anton. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's the uh, he's the big guy that he that Deuce like breaks that, his fish tank, so he has to like yeah do the thing for him. Yeah, yep, that's him. Wow, that's what I thought. It was a deep cut. <laughs> Thanks for making me look that up, asshole. <laughs> you know, I hey, le- I can't believe I didn't make the connection because uh, I 
I just went on Wikipedia for The Mummy, directed by Stephen Summers. I was like, oh yeah, he did Van Helsing. Ah, the fourth Summers brother. Oh, fuck! Van Helsing, great! I love that movie! Van Helsing fucking rules, and I will hear nothing negative about it. Yeah, it's great. It is the perfect, like, <sighs> B-cheese movie. Yeah, Van Helsing and the Mummy just yeah. capture, like, pulp adventure so well. Yes. Exactly. I would say it captures pulp adventure better than Star Wars. But that's just me. Or, I don't, no, in, you know, Indiana Jones, that's the thing. That, I, that's the one. I don't know if nowadays that's a hot take. Fair. Yeah. That's fair. I feel like nowadays, with hindsight and everything, I feel like that's a pretty lukewarm take. That's fair. I guess that makes sense. Uh, um, I want to make. I want, I want to play. Um, I know there's a Van Helsing game for PlayStation Two. Oh, it's got to be horrible, right? It, <laughs> Man, imagine if it was just like a really good Castlevania game. Um, from what I'm reading, it's more it's very similar in playstyle to Devil May Cry. Yeah. Are you for fucking I real? played a little bit of Am it. Am I going to have to play this fucking game now? I what is it on? Uh, PlayStation 2, Xbox, Game Boy Advance. There's no way I can get that running. Game Boy Advanced? Oh god, what does it look like on Game Boy Advance? Probably not good. Oh boy. <laughs> this is great for this Probably is great for an audio medium. Different from the other two. Yeah. This is great for oh. an audio medium. I'm gonna look up Van Helsing game. Oh, it's a, like a 3D isometric. Oh, this is bad. It almost kinda looks like a fucking like Diablo game. Or like oh. a ball like Baldur's like Baldur's like um the it's Baldur's like, Gate Dark Alliance games? Yeah, it's like it's like isometric and weird. <laughs> this sucks. Hmm. Was it on PC? Did you say it was on PC? No, PS2 and Xbox. Fuck. And I guess apparently mobile phone. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I should probably play this game right. Right? Uh... Oh, what if I just play Dark Watch instead? I mean, that might be a better idea. It'd probably be a lot better. Yeah, Dark Watch is a great game, actually. Uh, my, there's no way it's on PC. This my brother told PC me guy. he liked Why the Why do so game. many licensed games suck so bad? Because they shit... Because they had a very, very strict deadline, didn't care about uh, QA, and shit it out in as fast as possible. Yeah. But then why do the... But then why do the Pitch Black and, like, Riddick... Uh, because... Related ones actually so Vin great. Because Vin Diesel gave a fuck about that game. Vin Diesel... <laughs> was in that studio working on that game. I shit you not. He was part of the QA team. It was his studio that made it. Like, Tygon Games? That was him. Seriously? Yes. That's insane. He, w- like, he, I knew he, he was wanted that game D&D made, nerd. and he wanted it made right. Do you know the story of how he got Judy Dench in that Chronicles of Riddick movie? Through a D&D game, right? Better. So, he... When she was on Broadway, he filled her room with flowers, okay, took her on a date, like, took her out to eat steak, and then played a game of D&D with her, and she agreed oh, to go to, to play. Oh, my God. It, to be in it. <laughs> yep. Fucking Chad behavior, man. <clears throat> why do you think, why do you think all of the Fast and the Furious movies are basically just D&D adventures? Like, yeah, they no, all fair. share, like, a continuity. It's because, I know it's because of him. It's gotta be. Oh my god, there's a Dark Watch gameplay video by a man named John God Games. Yeah, I just... <coughs> now, what is Dark Watch? Dark Watch is a, a western about a dude that gets turned into a vampire, or, like, a half-vampire. And he has revolvers that have, like, blades on the ends of them. It's, like, very dark. Western fantasy. Mm, yeah, it looks like a weird West sort of deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a it's it's a fun continuity though. It did catch some controversy for a sex scene in the game. Oh yeah, well, that was before those were no common. Yeah, also it was two thousand five. <clears throat> yeah. Before they were common. That's what it said. Uh there were two you know, of them. It, it's it's a pretty good game though. Oh, it's made by High Moon. Cool. 
<coughs> you know, one of those mini, one of those mini, 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 mini studios that now work on Call of Duty. You don't know what games? Well, it was supposed to be a series. Hmm. Uh, oh no, I just lost the fucking name of it. <clears throat> Is the one that was written by Clive Barker, and you were the Undying. You're. No, not the Undying. It was on Xbox 360. Okay. And it's not Hellraiser. No. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, you, bad you were back. playing a military unit that was like Black Ops, and it was all uh, like going through the different biblical shit in the Middle East as you go Is back to time. Is it called Jericho? Oh, are yes. you thinking of Jericho? Jericho. I literally just typed in Clive Barker game. Yeah, no, I love Jericho. I know it didn't get a lot of great reviews. Oh, yeah. At least I don't remember. I don't remember it getting a lot, but that was supposed to be like a three-game series. I didn't know but that. But the sales of the first one just weren't enough. Yeah, any, any, anytime there's, a, there's a, a thing that you can click on in Wikipedia that just says canceled sequel. You know what's really good? Uh, the game that I was talking about, Un- Undying. Uh, the other Clive yeah no game. that's a pretty good that one. game's a hell of a game. Also, what's really good? Uh, American McGee's Alice. Those games are fucking great. Uh, both. Of I them. love the dark takes on fairy tales. Yeah, always good. I like him to an extent. <clears throat> I thought he was an asshole, and it turns out he didn't want his name on that game because he wanted it because it was made by a bunch of people. What was that sound? That was my phone going off. Oh. <clears throat> it plays the quest notification for Final 14 because I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, my my alarm is still um Seth Rollins burn it down theme. Yeah. Hey, that'll wake you up. It doesn't. <laughs> oh, well then you have a problem. <laughs> I yeah, I do I very much have a problem. I sleep through my alarms like a motherfucker. Have you con- At one point, I had Okada's <laughs> theme as my uh, alarm. I have a person hit me to wake me up in the morning, so it's fun. <clears throat> I I set my Google Home to play um to play My Chemical Romance at three thirty in the morning, and then mm. at four hit play any number of other bands, usually like Blink One Eighty Two or Linkin <clears throat> Park. And though that the four al- the four a.m. alarm usually gets me up, the three thirty alarm not so much. That's fair. I have uh, like not the beginning of it, <laughs> but like Kenny's old NJPW theme. Oh, um, like, Devil Sky. Yeah, but like right after the intro, where it's actually getting into the guitar. <laughs> you okay? That's what I have it as. Yeah, currently. just bad cough. I think I breathed. It's the Rona. No, it's not like that. I um got something down my throat earlier, and uh, Just I feel yeah. that yesterday. Yesterday, I was eating an ice cream cone that had a uh, peanut toppings. Mm. Almost inhaled the so fucking you got peanut. Nuts cutting your throat. Nice. Congratulations. Yes, I had a nut go down my yeah. throat. Hell yeah! Do you want to laugh about it now? No, live that best life. Ha 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 ha. Well, you know what they say: busting makes me feel good. Fair. Giggity, giggity, giggity. <clears throat> so, what do you guys want to say that this is uh, the end of the episode, huh? The main bad. I just saw a picture of a kid with Dan Housen face paint next to Eric Estrada. Love it. The uh, main bad guy from Doom Patrol is hiding <clears throat> within the loading bar of the episode. That's amazing. <clears throat> <laughs> you should watch Doom Patrol. You should all watch Doom Patrol. It's on HBO Max and it's amazing. Now, before we leave here, I, <clears throat> the, I, I, it's in my long list of games that I really, really want to play. Um, mm-hmm. because I, I didn't get the chance to play it however many years ago it came out. <laughs> I want to play Psychonauts. It's great. Yeah, see, I got a special relationship with Psychonauts. It's the whole reason my wife and I met. Aw. That's, that's amazing. Cute. I love that. I shit you not. 
please, please explain. Her family used to run a used game store here in the town we live in. And, like, and I'm gonna preface this with, I threw up every red flag you fucking could, and she still gave me her number. (laughs) Like, I came on like an axe fucking murderer. Well, you didn't murder her with an axe. So that's probably the biggest red flag you could avoid. But, but like, I had my buddy <clears throat> basically forced me to go in, and I'd been meaning to go there to see if they had a copy of Psychonauts, because I'd always wanted to play it. And that's how I ended up, like, you know, he convinced me to go in. It's like, Worst comes to worst, you pick up the game, you make yourself look like an idiot, you come home, you drink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even though I threw up every fucking red flag, she still gave me your number, and then we didn't stop texting for like a week. Aww. Like a week goddamn straight. It was at the point that like I'd get off work from working an eight-hour shift, and then I'd get off, and like two hours later, mm-hmm. her parents' store would open. So I'd go spend like my day off with her Aww. without sleeping. That's adorable. And I'd fall I would fall asleep behind the counter and she'd just kind of wheel me over into the corner. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But um And now it's a decade later. <laughs> you love to see Hell it. yeah. But um what made me want to play Psychonauts is that I was listening to the Best News podcast, and I think they were talking about Psychonauts too, and when you talk about a sequel to a game, you have to talk about the first one a little bit anyway. And they mentioned Mm -hmm. the Milkman conspiracy stage. (laughs) Oh yeah. uh, I'm the milkman. My milk is delicious. Yeah. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, I have Psychonauts on steam. I need to play it. You should see, I've never actually finished it because for some fucking reason, my brain won't let me mm. because it has this hang up that if I do, everything will go. That's shit. a mood. That's why yeah. I still haven't finished Persona 5. That's why I haven't finished uh, the last season of Korra. That's also why I still haven't finished Kingdom Hearts 3. <clears throat> see, I didn't finish Kingdom Hearts 3, but that's just because I lost interest. That's fair. Yep. It's just the, and then I have to buy like a thirty dollar DLC to actually get the ending of the story. Fuck you. Wait for what? Which one is that? Kingdom Hearts three. Oh god, yeah. Don't get me started. Remind is what it's called. Don't get me started because Nick will figure out what I'm talking about. That pisses me off. Angry with me. Like it's one thing if you have extra DLC and it's like extra story after. Yep. No, the ending of the whole story, which you said was going to be in three, should fucking be in the main game. Yep, agree. 100%. I feel like that's a good place to end this episode on a small, mini little Kingdom Hearts rant. Scream, screaming and ranting out Kingdom Hearts. That's, that's the way we should end every episode. You mean the natural state of any Kingdom Hearts fan? I don't scream and rant about Kingdom Hearts. I fucking love Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I don't care what yeah, anyone but you, says. But you end up screaming and ranting to yourself trying to understand the whole damn thing. No, I understand Kingdom Hearts pretty <sighs> well. Good night, everybody. Listen, it goes down like this, all right? <laughs> this will be the end, I promise. Everyone, <laughs> fade it to black. everyone is Xehanort. Everyone else mm-hmm. is Sora. Or no, everyone is and Ansem. So- yep. So far, so good. And then everyone else is Sora. And then Sora is one of them. That tracks. I think. <clears throat> and their who the final fuck, is, who their the final fuck is even is she on? Somewhere. Nobody. Don't worry about that. An imperfect replica of Sora, apparently. Derived from his okay. memories. Okay, alright. Of... This is dumb! Yeah. Okay, <laughs> alright. Everyone is Sora. Every, yep. We can all agree. Alright. Well, thank you guys for listening to this episode of After Dark. We really appreciate it. If you want to find us, you yeah. can follow us on Twitter at AmbiguousPod. You can like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash AmbiguousPod. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Finally have every single episode of the podcast uploaded. <coughs> so have Excuse fun. Me. Have a good Listen. one. Till next time, Soras. Later.
Don't forget to write. And wash behind your ears. Do both of these things. Yes. They are good for you. And wash your Friendship hands. Friendship is the key. Turn the page and wash your hands. And turn the page and wash your hands. And don't forget to... And then eat some ice cream. Don't forget to wash your peepus. <clears throat> Goodbye. Turn the page and wash your hands. And then turn the page and wash your hands. I'm going to keep right, doing I'm... this until you end the episode. Turn the page. Uh, no, no, it's over. I'm, I'm hitting stop on Audacity right now.